So first things first, you, you know, you wouldn't plan on building a house uh, without first having some sort of visual aid uh, that helps you know exactly where it's going to go. So your architect's going to draw up a plan. That's essentially what we're going to do here first for Trey, is we uh, want to make sure that this tooth that he's missing, it's his lower left tooth, and we might get a close-up here, Michael, so people can see that. How long have you been missing this tooth? I took it out About two, two years. years ago. Okay. So we're getting a little bit of drift. It's where the tooth behind will shift forward and the teeth above will start to drift down. Um, we have a, an example I'll talk with you a little bit later about um, pros and cons of implants versus bridges. I know that's a question I get on our YouTube channel a lot and from patients a lot is why would I want to do an implant over a bridge? There's some pretty sound uh, reasoning behind that. I think I can help people uh, understand and navigate that decision. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into getting this implant process going for Trey. So first thing we're going to do is use that cool technology you guys have already seen if you've been following us on our channel where we're able to take a three-dimensional uh, topographical impression or image of Trey's current teeth, gums, and surrounding structures there. And that way we know where we want this crown to actually go rather than placing the implant first. So you can kind of see the logic there, right? Why, why would we want to just put an implant in the bone without any sort of uh, defined plan for where the crown is going to go and work with the patient's bite? And so that's what this whole process is about here. And what we're doing today is a lot different than a stent. So I know there will be some that will say, well, we use a, a stent to plan the implant. Michael, are you on this now? I don't know if you've got that screen shared there. So on this software, you'll notice that we've already selected tooth number 19. It's this lower left first molar. We've selected that as the tooth that we're going to design on his gum. So obviously we're just thinking, hey, down the road, this is ideally where you want, we want your future tooth to be. And so in this software, we're going to go ahead and image that. And you'll notice here in just a second, it'll start taking some pictures of his lower teeth. We good there, Michael? Okay. So you can see I, I'm going to go around it far enough that we're going to get some really good stability from our guide. And just basically enough information that when I put this guide in for Trey later when I'm placing this implant, it will snap in nice and tight, not move around. He's got such a big mouth, he's going to give me a challenge, but that's okay. <laughs> that's why we chose you. Big, big mouths are going to be easier for you guys to see everything. But you can see where he's missing this tooth. And you can kind of see how this model is being built off of this scan here. So back to kind of what I was saying earlier about this is going to be a 3D computer guide, not a, um, a stent. So this is way different type of accuracy, safety, precision and planning than you're getting from a stent. So if you hear that term stent or they're not taking a three-dimensional x-ray, then we're not really talking about a computer-guided implant with the precision we can give here. So my, my hopes are, and I, I, and I feel this way obviously, and I, this might ruffle some feathers, but I'm, I'm more about giving the best patient education and care, and I really feel this way about this type of implant dentistry. When you really start to understand what it's doing for the patient and the accuracy and safety involved and the precision and, and way that we can restore the teeth, um, I, I would question why you'd want it done any other way. It's just so predictable, accurate, safe uh, when it's used, obviously, correctly by an experienced dentist knowing how to operate the, the technology. So there's our lower impression of the, the lower teeth. Now, we obviously, we can plan his tooth probably pretty well off of just that. But we obviously don't know exactly where his bite's at. I can go ahead and have you bite together, and I can, I can kind of go, okay, he's got a, he's got a cross bite. He's got that uh, class three bite relationship. Now, are you biting all the way forward, or you, can you take your jaw back any further? Is that mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to be putting an implant in cross bite. So this is actually a really good reason why we'd want to take uh, an upper bite. So go ahead and open there for me. I knew you were in cross bite. I didn't know it was that large, but hey, we'll work with that. Mm -hmm. So it, what's kind of cool about this is he's got a bite that normally, if I were to just plan that crown and place that implant right over the ridge without any idea of where that future crown would be, there's a good chance I'd be off 
and not place that implant at the proper angle. And so we create some problems when we do that. So here you'll see we'll scan the upper arch. That way at least I know how we can work that upper arch with his bite. Now go ahead and bite together again. And now for those watching the screen, you'll be able to see here that bite being in cross. What that basically means is his upper teeth are within, as you can see right there, his lower teeth. So we got a cross bite that if we didn't plan for, we're going to have a little trouble um, for placing a nice implant. All right. And he's, for those dentists or maybe some of the people watching that are uh, students, I know there's a lot number of you, he would be a surgical class three cross bite. So there's not anything uh, other than surgery to correct that if you were going, well, maybe you should do braces first or something like that. That's, that's not uh, doable here without surgery. So. All right, you get to take a break for a little bit here. Actually, we're, we will take a 3D x-ray in just a minute. Um, let me show the uh, viewers here this uh, plan where I'll show the design of that crown. I'll, it'll be rudimentary because we're obviously not making a crown. We're just going to use it for visual purposes so that way we place this implant correctly. Um, I was just telling a gentleman earlier, this is going to be pretty cool and it'll all come together. You just kind of kind of have to stick with me in the reasoning and kind of the, the imaging and how they merge. For example, you're going to get to see um, an impression that we just took merge with a 3D x-ray. So two totally different types of imaging. One is just shooting x-ray through a patient and get, getting a 3D model of their jaw and their teeth. And then we're going to take something that you just saw was just topographical image. So just an image, an impression essentially. And those two data sets are going to move together and connect in order for us to create this special guide. Now I forgot to get one of these out while this model is getting created. Sorry, Michael, I know I'm running all over the place for you, but this is, if you want to hold that up, Des, that is what the guide will be creating is similar. It would look like give everybody kind of a preview of that. And then we've got a couple of different implants so you can see what that looks like too and we'll kind of show those throughout the appointment we'll get to see that one made specifically for for trey in just a few minutes all right so now we've got the software here where i've got trey's bite and uh, arch there and then I can go and tell the computer hey let's make a crown on the gums here So now that I've got that defined, I can tell the computer, hey, give me something that looks like a tooth number 19 there. Do we have any questions so far? What's the minimum time after an extraction? Um, so minimum time after extraction. So there's, there's a lot of different views on that. Um, after placing over 500, almost 600 implants, my uh, experience and, and some of the, the situations that I've, I've been able to treat, um, I've come up with an opinion that says, you know, if you've got a fracture or a broken tooth from trauma, we're talking about no possibility of any sort of really infection at the root of that tooth especially in the cosmetic area, we can actually take the tooth out and place it immediately. And that's what we did with um, a patient, uh, Eva, that I'm working on finishing up the video from the lady from New York um, a couple uh, months ago, about a month ago. Um, and we restored her front tooth. She came in from New York and put, put a brand new implant in same day. It was a perfect example of why you would use same day placement. Um, if you have any signs of infection or issues with that tooth, whether it's uh, broken for a while and has, you're kind of concerned about the gum health, then uh, you know, at least a week or two uh, to allow for the body to completely rid itself 
of the infection or anything that might uh, hinder the healing aspect of, of the implant. There's really no need to give months uh, of healing because all you're doing is letting bone grow back and then you're going to go right back in and remove that bone. So it's, it's, a, it's a wasted uh, effort to let that fully heal. Uh, and to that note, bone grafts are seldom, ne uh, seldom necessary when an extraction is performed carefully and the roots are um, extracted without much trauma to the bone, surrounding bone. Now, sometimes you just can't avoid that, but if you're super careful and don't uh, mess with the, the bone around it, um, and you know, we have all of the walls of the existing bone still present, then we can obviously use, uh, uh, don't have to graft and wait that, that amount of time. So grafting does add time to it, but most times we don't need grafting. So I thought that I'd throw that out there. So we've got a tooth now that let's see how it works with your bite here, Trey. So it works in the arch just fine. And down the road, looks like it might work pretty darn well with your, your bite, right? So not bad at all. So if that was your future tooth working on top of an implant, I think we could all settle for that being a pretty nice result. So that being said, we can go ahead and use that, that crown there to plan our implant. So I'm gonna export that. Um, and what that basically means, I'm gonna take the impression we just took and I'm gonna send it to our server and we're gonna call it, uh, a, basically I'll just call it Trey for, I think I can remember that. So Trey and then um, we will merge this impression with his 3D that we're gonna take right now. So you guys are free to kind of start doing that aspect of it. Um, I guess I already had you set up here, I think. Or maybe not. Up. Cool. While you do that, uh, I can. Are you on that one? Live on that one? Where do you want me to? I was going to talk about the implant. Okay. So while she's pulling this up and Trey's going to go take this impression, uh, I might have a minute here to show you. Every implant is going to be three components. It's going to be the implant fixture, which I don't know if you can zoom in on that, Michael. It's pretty small. I get it. But the implant fixture, which is going to be this small portion, and this is obviously a front tooth, and I've got a back tooth as well. So we've got two different visual aids for people to help understand. And that would be a good thumbnail, Michael. <laughs> so right there, we've got um, a front tooth and a back tooth. And you can see the titanium root. So that's the implant fixture. Then there's an abutment that's screwed into that or an attachment is the word I like to use, but the fancy word we dentists like to use fancy stuff. So uh, it makes us sound smart, I guess. But the abutment is what we uh, screw into the implant. And then on top of that is cemented or bonded a crown or some sort of, uh, we use all porcelain, but there's a bunch of different options for that. But you can see those put together. Um, so those three components make up every implant. This is where it gets a little fuzzy when you're talking about uh, cost of an implant, right? If you call up some people and you ask for a, a cost of an implant, uh, they're going to quote a fee for just the fixture. Uh, and obviously, it's the lowest fee. So um, that's a, a little bit misleading if you're really thinking, hey, what's the cost of, for me to have a tooth? I mean, that's what patients are probably considering, right? Is what does it cost for me to have a full tooth present in the mouth? And that obviously is a variable for everybody depending on the extraction, the is there a need for grafting do you have any benefits plan so i mean we answering that on the phone is pretty difficult i think if you do your research and just google what do implants cost you'll know they cost anywhere from probably the bottom end is totally completed somewhere around three thousand to as much as maybe seven thousand or so depending on location cost of doing business all of those things uh, we're definitely more to, uh, in the middle there on our most of our average fees on, on doing an implant but that includes everything so implant abutment or attachment and the crown so help help people and maybe understand there's those three components you don't really care how they're priced out you care what they cost all together so all right time to follow Trey we got now this 3d imaging machine that we're gonna go take an impression you guys just walk I'll talk about it so this machine we're gonna go take an image on um, if you're familiar with a medical CT medical CT takes uh, about a hundred slices I believe uh, maybe they can obviously change that up depending on uh, what they're trying to image, but uh, a, a doctor might order a CT scan and it'll pass around the body many, many times and in increments to create a three-dimensional model of the bone and tissue. This here is going to be a cone beam CT. So hey, Dexter, you want to, you got to get Dexter in here. He's going to have to move though. We don't want to, you don't want to get irradiated, huh? So um, the, uh, come over here, bud. So I don't know, the light's kind of cruddy here. I'll just talk right here. So with this machine, the 
uh, one pass will give us a three-dimensional impression of all of this region. So we'll be able to capture all the data that we'll need for uh, planning this implant. And you'll see it takes, I think, about 18 seconds or so. It's under, under 20 seconds to do one image, and it's single pass. And then Trey's doing a great job just standing really still. That's really important um, as that image gets made. So I don't know. I, I think, Des, isn't it like 530 or so images it just took? Yeah. So it's over 500 images that just took an 18 seconds. And it puts it together on a computer and builds a three-dimensional file. And that file is going to make up the impression that we're able to merge the um, uh, 3D that we just took, the Sarah. All right, so now we have this new 3D image. And nice job, Trey. You didn't move at all. Looks like a great image. And then we'll go ahead and open up a planning software called Galileo's Implant. This implant software is pretty slick. It allows us to do all of this uh, visual aid in designing and planning an implant. So why to go at all this trouble of uh, guide and, and why, you know, what basically when you're placing an implant, you're going into sight unseen, right? So you're going in below the gums, and that's what makes it a surgical procedure. Um, we're, Typically, we have to make some sort of incision. Now, what is, what is most common is a large incision made and tissue reflected in order to visualize the bone. Anytime you do a large incision, you're going to uh, have a much greater chance of uh, infection, post-op pain, uh, difficult with um, you know, the, just the overall healing time. Uh, I'll talk more about that after I get this planned since we're already here on planning it. So now I can go, move this cursor over um, our implant site. We can zoom back and forth through the three dimensions of Trey's bone there. What's kind of cool is down here, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's way down there. So your nerve is way down at the bottom here in this middle screen. If anybody can see that circle right there in the middle of that middle screen. So way away from his nerve. So he's lucky. He's a great guy. He's got a nerve way away from his teeth. A lot of people, it's, it's really close or high up. Um, I've, I've taken a tooth, uh, an implant out and fixed uh, an implant on a lady who had, um, in Arkansas, had an implant placed that was into her nerve and caused, uh, she's still having some issues with numbness. So um, kind of a serious condition there. That's why we want to use a guide and safely place implants. All right, here is the software. I can go and find that impression. So there's Trey. Remember I named Trey? Go ahead and pull Trey in here, this 3D. And that looks exactly like the impression we took. And here's that part where I was telling you where we get to merge these two data sets. So I get to tell the computer, hey, that's the same spot as that. That tooth is the same tooth as that one. This canine here is the same canine there in the 3D x-ray. And this canine over here is the same canine that he has here. So those four different points are all the same. This is the topographical information. This is the 3D uh, rendition of the x-ray. It's obviously two-dimensional there, but you can see how those parts meet up. The computer, after telling it that, will take and put them together. And then I get to go and try to verify and make certain that that is a correct orientation of that uh, stitch is what we call it. It's where the model fits over the uh, x-ray. And you can see there that yellow line perfectly follows the contours of Trey's teeth there in the 3D x-ray. So we know we are in good shape. So now let's plan an implant. I can confirm that. An implant, I bet we can place a five by 10 is maybe a decent start. Tooth number 19. Let's see what we look like here. So you can see in this uh, image, I can do all three dimensions. So we can work on depth, angle, I'll go with a 4.3 by 10 there. 
is what I feel like would work nice. And you can see how this angle now works with his tooth above, right? Pretty cool. We can also see that we've got enough bone on the cheek side and enough bone on the tongue side to sufficiently support this implant and give it long-term health. And then I can also now plan the guide sleeve or the ring that's going to control this. So how is this going to be placed exactly where we want it to go? It's going to be controlled by this guide that we're going to mill here in a few minutes. And this ring that you see cross sections of, and now if I throw up this 3D, you can see, especially if I move, remove the crown, so there's the crown. There now is that ring. So hopefully as the, the viewers there, you can see that, that ring is going to be present in our guide that Des was showing you earlier. That's an example of a guide that had a ring in it. And that's going to be at the angle. And the instruments we use to place the implant will help us do that with proper depth and angle and, and avoid hitting anything that we don't want to. So it is time for us to export this and make the guide. So we go to surgery, export. All right, so now that has been exported, Michael, we can head back over to this AC. And I'm pulling in the uh, information that we just decided on there for Trey's implant. You can see now in the software we have tooth number 19 selected for our implant, if I highlight it there. And I'll tell the computer where I want that guide dimensions to go. And it will propose a guide for us there. What, any other questions that we might have? Um, some of it's going to be late, I think. Mm -hmm. That's why we didn't do the big line of braces before. Yeah, so you may have missed earlier the, uh, the cross bite and the class 3 bite that Trey has is a surgical position. So it's a surgical class 3, meaning it's going to require a surgical approach, a sectioning of the jaw and, and repositioning of the jaw to correct. And uh, we opted not to do that. Uh, that wasn't uh, something he was wanting to do. Uh, he has a great adaptive bite. Plus, he's just got a strong masculine jaw. Right, man? <laughs> big, yeah, big guy on campus. So uh, anyway, so now we've got, um, you can see here on this plan, there's the implant, right? Isn't that cool? So now you can see where the implant was planned in this software and how it works out with our visual aid here. I don't know, this one probably makes the most sense to people to view the 3D, so I'll pull that back up. Hopefully everybody, so what you're seeing here is what we did there, working the two together, making sense hopefully. Uh, and now we can go ahead and uh, tell the computer what I'm going to do is leave that drill support present. And it's going to Im look at all those teeth and create a that clear guide. And we'll go ahead and get started to move up front here. To well, actually, I'll show you. The, I'll show a few other things here. Sorry, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. When, after this proposes a um, a guide, the clear stent here and the guide that we're going to create, I can go in and um, tell it exactly where to put some special windows for visibility. And the reason we do that is so, obviously, it's great that we can plan it accurately. This is very accurate, by the way. It's within 200 microns, so we're not, we're, we're, we're not going to miss where we want to go, assuming the guide fits really well. And so you don't just want to trust the guide fits. It, it almost always does, but, you know, there's a variability in there. So what if it didn't? And these windows I can use to make certain that the guide fits exactly like it should. And I'll show those before we place the implant. So... If the windows are kind of like, what are you talking about? And you're not quite certain, I'll plan them here, but you'll get to see why they're present here in a few minutes. Uh, well, about 30 minutes after we make this guide, um, you'll see it in the arch. So here's the guide, and there's the block that it's going to be milled on. 
We don't have to have it be that large, so I'll probably cut it off where I've cut it off there now. And then now we have these inspection windows that I can create. So there's an inspection window, where's one? I, I typically like to have three, three different spots where I can see the teeth. And can you see that there? Hopefully you can see where the teeth are peeking through. Uh, and I can verify that the guide fits just like that when we go to place it in his mouth. And if it does, that means that ring is going to be exactly where that ring is. And if that ring is exactly where it pl planned there, we're going to place the implant exactly where we planned it. Am I missing anything, Des? No? We covered it all. Okay. All right. Trey, you getting excited for an implant? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I, we, we do a lot of implants here. And so one of the main things that you can just see, everybody's got such a, and he's pretty cool, calm and collected, but you can see the anxiety that people have with having an implant. And I, we totally get it. That's the idea of this video. It's the idea of, uh, we're gonna compile this obviously to something a little shorter that just has the highlights of the, the procedure. But it, we're trying to help those who are, have a lot of fear understand what's happening and why if you're, if you're getting the right care done, it really shouldn't be a fearful process. It's, it's very predictable and, and very safe. Uh, here is a cutout there of what that guide's gonna look like. And so it's time to send it to our milling machine up front. Let's go up there and we'll show them how that is. Mm -hmm. All right. Trey, we don't even really need you, man. You can just sit there and chill. All right, I'm chilling. Yep. All right. So we're heading up to the front of the lobby here. Hey guys, have a good one. <laughs> so um, in our lobby, you'll see we have a clear guide, that block that you just saw placed uh, in the software back there. That's this block right here. And this is what we're gonna use to mill out um, our guide. And so this machine here, will use some carbide burrs and it'll cut out all of those dimensions I believe this one will probably take, if I'm betting man, which I'm not, but I'm guessing 35 minutes or so. So you all are gonna have to give me some questions because um, 35 minutes is gonna be a long time for me to talk about implants. I'll give you my spiel on why guided implants other than accuracy here in a minute. But now you can see on this software, it's gonna load it. And then the image you'll see here pull up on this screen will be the guide itself, so that's kind of cool. You can see on the screen there, Michael. Dexter, you having a good time today? So Michael's gonna keep an eye on that. It'll, it'll start milling and shooting a ton of water and that plastic, right now it's the machine is calibrating itself, making sure that the block that I placed in there is the accurate one. Um, and that way when it starts cutting out the material, it'll be super precise. Also makes uh, some snow, right? All the shape. Yeah, all the shavings end up looking like snow. One of the uh, dental assistants, Anna, God bless her, she thought she was going to be really funny and make me a snow cone this last week from some of these shavings. Fortunately, we realized that it was uh, shavings before I took a sip. It's a mean joke there, Anna. She almost got me. I almost yeah. cried it. Did she? Man, crazy. Another good reminder for a summer smile giveaway. So we are including implants in that process. So if you're, if you're missing a front tooth, as part of uh, cosmetic treatment that can be completed in, same, in a single visit, then that's uh, what we're hoping to do for people is we're gonna bring one lucky winner who uh, wins the vote by Facebook. If you go on all the details, go to summersmilegiveaway.com. Pretty good there, Michael. Didn't miss a beat. So now, what does it say? Time-wise, it's not right yet. It'll, it'll change here in a second.
pretty exciting stuff, I know, guys. But we wanted the, the whole process put together from start to finish is worth catching. So, yeah. Oh, we're there. Sweet. So I was like really close. Uh, this might be a good time. I'll, I'll kind of just talk a little bit about why guided implants, why I think they're so important, uh, the benefits to patients, um, and what makes them drastically different than like a, um, a uh, surgical or a, a free-handed implant. Uh, most implants in our country still are placed with a free hand, which just means that the surgeon is going to make an incision, reflect back tissue to visualize where they're placing the implant. And it's because they don't have three-dimensional imaging and a guide that's helping place that implant without that type of need for visualization. So if you kind of understand what I'm getting at there is it, it allows... Um, it, it, that, that incision alone causes more bleeding, more hemorrhage, problems with, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, infection, uh, post-op pain. The healing time is definitely going to be longer when you have to make that flap and inc incision. The process of placing the implant is going to take longer. So those are all, you know, kind of disadvantages to that older way of surgically placing an implant with an incision like that. Um, and it's also obviously just more invasive. So you know, the need for sedation. That's gonna be a question I, I'm shocked no one's asked yet, but Trey's not gonna be sedated. He's gonna be under local anesthetic. Uh, he's not gonna feel a thing, and we're gonna be done in 10 minutes. So the implant will be placed precisely where we want it to go because we're using this, and I don't need to make that incision because the bone has already been visualized with our 3D X-ray, and we're using the guide to make certain we place it in the right spot, so. Um, my, my belief is that uh, as more dentists provide this and as the education gets out there, that more and more people would not even want to see uh, an implant placed uh, with that older surgical method just because of the accuracy and all the things I've already listed a couple of times. Um, and our patients choose us for that very reason. That does bring up, if you are interested in traveling to Innovative Dental for uh, an implant placement, cosmetic dentistry, we have a website set up for you. You go to your smiledestination.com. <laughs> Michael's smiling at me because I forgot for two seconds because we've got Summer Smile Giveaway and then we've got yoursmiledestination.com. So yoursmiledestination.com is part of our concierge service of helping people travel to Innovative Dental uh, from wherever they might be. Uh, we've already had a number of people from across the U.S., uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, I think I have a virtual consultation with a lovely lady from the Bahamas coming up. So we connect with you and do virtual consults. That way you can be face to face with me. I can look through your records, give you an idea of what we can do to help you achieve your smile, whether that's implants or cosmetic dentistry. Those are kind of the two main focuses of this type of treatment. We can do alignment, but it's going to take multiple visits. So we are a uh, top 1% uh, provider on Invisalign. I think they change it to diamond or whatever. Diamond? Yeah. So it's called a diamond provider. But we do a lot of clear aligner therapy. We're also able to do that with a few visits. So someone that uh, might be regionally or doesn't mind traveling to Springfield, which is pretty awesome, we can do uh, Invisalign for you as well as part of our cosmetic treatment, which Invisalign does help a ton of our cosmetic treatments turn out uh, much better than they would without the alignment first. So it's pretty pretty important. Uh, what questions? Come on, we have any others? What's one? What if they had it removed years ago? Yeah. And the other teeth, teeth have started moving in? Yeah. Are... So when, when the teeth have shifted, it just depends on how bad they shifted. Like for Trey, he's, he's got some shifting there. It's just not too bad. It's probably about a half a millimeter to a millimeter. And it's not significant enough that we can't still place a beautiful implant that's very upright and doesn't leave these big traps. A lot of times the shifting is so much that the tooth needs to really be uprighted and that's where Invisalign or braces would come into play and give us a big benefit to upright that tooth. And just like the x-ray I showed you earlier, a lot of times we'll run into a case where the tooth above has come down. So even if we wanted to place uh, an implant, we wouldn't have the proper space to give the proper height to that future crown. So first we need to move that tooth back up that came down. So hopefully that makes sense. We've had a patient, uh, a few months ago, it was a younger lady. I, I know I used to hang out with her at the pool back in the day when I was a lifeguard. And she came in and she's like, man, I've been missing this tooth for a few years. I'd love to um, get an implant over here. And I go, 
we'll get you an implant, but first we're gonna have to move your teeth because we didn't have any room. Uh, there was just a few millimeters of space for a crown because the tooth had come down so much. And we were both pretty shocked. I mean, a few years is not that much time and that's a lot of shifting uh, from a lot of the tooth coming down. There's two different forces that are always happening with teeth uh, and they, they only stop when they hit something. That's gonna be eruption. So teeth are always erupting out of the, out of the bone and they're always moving forward. The things, so forward in the mouth. So what, the only things that stop that, all right, are them coming and hitting each other. And when they shift forward, they hit something and they stop because their they're forces, they're hitting a tooth in front. So those forces are just natural. They happen on everybody's mouth. And that's why if you have missing teeth, the consequences are that you're gonna see those shifting, uh, that shifting over time. Uh, younger you are, obviously the more critical it is because uh, decades of that will lead to uh, back to that x-ray again, there's, I don't know how many cr crowns we need. And I mean, there's probably three or $4,000 worth of dentistry, not alone, yet alone the alignment. Uh, so we're, we're probably eight, nine, $10,000 of damage from a missing tooth possibly that if we would have had the tooth replaced and some things uh, go differently there for that patient, that, that guy that would have been a lot easier to manage. So hopefully that helps there. What other question? Any others? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Innovative Dental is a general dental office. We do a ton of uh, anything from, you know, taking care of kids to cosmetic dentistry. We definitely have an emphasis on utilizing technology to provide those types of treatments that um, are really fairly advanced. Obviously, doing accelerated Invisalign with Propel uh, is, a, is a big part of um, what we do cosmetic dentistry with veneers and porcelain, and then obviously computer guided implants. Um, but I would argue, I mean, obviously, where, where do you define general dentistry? I mean, typically people think of long-term oral health when they're thinking general dentistry. So they're going to a, a dentist that provides a general overview of, of how they get healthy. And um, I feel like it's hard to do that without proper position teeth. So having some way to help people either go to a, an orthodontist or providing the care yourself uh, that delivers uh, a quality result for that patient and gives them a balanced bite uh, by aligning their teeth, so positioning. And then the other one would be if they're missing teeth, either being able to restore the implant with an implant and place the implant uh, like we do here, um, or at least have a surgeon place the implant for you and restore that site. I can tell you that obviously the, the acceptance in, in a general dentist's office of being able to provide all these services for our patients um, is way up because they learn to trust you and then have that built built in relationship already. And so uh, we're able to guide the whole process without this communication gap and deliver it with uh, technology very predictably. So hopefully that helps. I mean, Do implants require any additional upkeep? Uh, upkeep. So, so upkeep with an implant. Um, so obviously you got to brush and floss. Uh, the implants are not going to get cavities. So that's a huge advantage. Uh, titanium and porcelain doesn't decay, but you can still have issues with the gum. So it's important that gum health is maintained. So brushing and flossing regularly uh, to maintain that the gum health is there. Um, that's the big thing. So uh, the forces that are placed on implants in the mouth, natural forces, uh, are not even close to sufficient to cause damage or issues unless we have implants placed off axis or incorrect size of implants used. And those are all, I mean, those are all things I've seen. So part of this guided process is using the right implant, placing it in the exact position. You'll notice back that 3D that we, we looked at and placed the implant, it was right, right in line with this crown, right? So we didn't do something like this or something like that, or even worse like that or that. And I don't know if you can see that. So different angles with that future crown cause a problem for when the patient chews, it's gonna to wanna to torque or put an awkward force on that crown. Those torquing forces or awkward forces can cause the screw that holds the crown in place to break. Uh, they can cause damage to the implant. So while implants are pretty darn strong, if they're not placed correctly, uh, it doesn't matter how strong we place something, the forces we place in our mouth consistently for decades can cause uh, a lot of issue. So we had a, an implant, uh, what, a couple weeks ago, come, uh, a patient uh, had done uh, at another office is a while back and um, she, the implant broke and upon in inspection, there was no bone on the side of the implant, so no support. So the patient was chewing, 
and putting a lot of force on that implant because it was a molar and it broke, the implant actually broke because there wasn't enough bone to support it. So if a guide was used and the implant was placed precisely where it should have been within the bone, this would have not been an issue. So that's another good example of uh, precision placement being important for long-term health of the implant. Do I do root canals? I do root canals. Uh, not a huge fan of doing molar endo or molar root canals. Uh, prefer to have discussions with patients and help them see the overall benefits to aligning their teeth, replacing missing teeth. Root canals are, uh, you know, you can probably see I'm fairly much an extrovert. Although these videos, I, I think uh, anytime you're live, you get a little bit of the jitter, so you might 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 be more reserved in these videos. But uh, I like to communicate, talk with people, and engage with them, and help you know them see how we can help them. I can't be doing that if I'm working in a patient's mouth for an hour doing a molar root canal. So it's just something I don't really particularly love. And there's an endodontist here in town that's uh, phenomenal at it. And I just couldn't see doing them anymore. I used to do quite a few, so referring those. Uh, but as far as premolars uh, and front teeth, uh, we do a lot of those in our office as well. So yeah, I mean, we do some limited basis root canals. Most of the front teeth is what we kind of target for that. So. How long have you been doing guided implants? Guided implants? Um, we were the first, I believe in our town, first office, I think, to ever start doing uh, 3D guided implant dentistry, which is about four years ago, five years ago. Technology's been around for, golly, I'm trying to think of the first guides, maybe seven or eight years. And it used to be something we had to send off to Germany to be made. Uh, and I've done that. Uh, that's back when I first started, that's what we had to do. Um, and then it evolved to where we were able to start fabricating in office guides the system to do that was not nearly as nice as it is now. So the ability that we have to create guides in our office like this in a matter of, I know it's taken us, what, 25, 30 minutes to mill it out. But typically what we do is we would plan all this, mill this out at night when I leave. So I'll come over here, start this when I leave the office. And then the next day, if the patient's coming back in or the next week, we'll have the guide ready to place. So the patient's appointments are very, very short um, to place an implant, which who doesn't love that? You know, you have to, we've had people, many people have had implants placed surgically with the incision and Desiree can attest to this. This is a common thing. We get people that have multiple implants and they've had this sedation, incision, maybe post-op infection and pain, all this association with implants. They're like, man, that was a real big process. And so I talked to them about how we can do 3D guided implants in our, pro in our office and how it's just not the same. And they end up, hopefully many of them trust us to do it and they just are blown away. Uh, they, can't, they can't believe that they're leaving the office in you know, under 20 or 30 minutes from start to finish and are, are going back to work, many of them, or at least not, not sitting there worrying when having a ton of pain or any issues with uh, post-op. Most patients kind of come back in and we always check people about a week later just to make certain there's no signs of infection. And it's incredibly rare that we have people that will even say that they had much pain at all or had to take any of the pain meds. So we get pain meds just because we, you know, if you can't reach me at nine or 10 o'clock or in the middle of the night, I want you to be able to have them, but uh, it's just incredibly rare that you, you need them. So pretty cool. You do take a, a antibiotic for a prophylaxis uh, just to make certain you don't get an infection. Um, and we take that for uh, seven to 10 days um, at post-op after implants. Good questions. How does the strength of the implant compare to a natural tooth? Right, so implants are, definitely stronger than a natural tooth. The size of the implant does matter, right? So we have uh, three five is a, the narrowest I use for replacing uh, most teeth. There is a 3.0 millimeter implant that's designed for maybe like a lower incisor or a lateral incisor when you have very minimal bone. Um, but as far as what's indicated for the regular teeth, and I've seen those by the way used um, for molars or premolars, so incorrectly used, that's a really dangerous thing. So. Um, it's really important we use the right implants for our patients, but a 3.0 is not designed for anything other than just a lateral. The 3.5, and obviously there's multiple implant systems, so that's going to vary, but I'm just telling you what we use. A 3.5 uh, size is for maybe like a lateral. Um, we, we don't use them too often for premolars, but if we need to because of space, they're acceptable there. Um, and then this one we're placing today is a 4.3. Uh, I could have maybe squeezed a 5.0 in there, but a 4.3 is definitely sufficient. So. When you're talking about space or strength, it really depends on the size of the implant, placing the proper size. And if you place the proper size, um, I mean, I, I don't know the exact number of implants I've placed, but I have had zero fractured implants. 
none. No fractured titanium, no fractured porcelain, and it's, it's well over 500 implant at this point. So uh, that's a good factor, right? I mean, you, I mean, teeth obviously break at a much greater rate than that. So uh, the, the likelihood of titanium and porcelain as thick as we're able to make it on, on top of an implant breaking, uh, really, really slim. I would say probably the only thing that's gonna really cause an implant to break would probably be a, an accident, a trauma victim, somebody who had a, uh, you know, a car wreck, something like that. But otherwise, I, I don't see that happening with natural forces. Sure. So the main cost difference between having a general dentist or an oral surgeon place an implant, and obviously this is, I mean, totally blanket statement. I, I, don't, ha I don't have everybody's fee schedules, so I have no clue. But I can give you an insight. We don't do sedation here, so that's a big cost benefit, right? Uh, we don't have to do sedation. We, you'll see in a minute why we don't. Uh, it's totally not necessary for our patients because the, the process is so quick and easy. Um, it would be a waste of their funds to do it. And uh, so that right there is usually 800 to 1,000 I've seen build. I mean, it just depends where you're at once again. So that's a big cost savings, no sedation industry. Also likelihood of being able to go back to work immediately instead of hey, taking more time off work. I and mean, there's a cost you don't even think about. It's like the opportunity cost of something, right? If, you, if it takes more time to heal and recover from a procedure and you can't be working, then we're costing you more money and that's an inherent uh, cost to, to your treatment. So, um, you know, that's, that's a big one. Um, the other thing would be they're typically, most surgeons are oral surgeons, I should say, oral surgeons, periodontists. Um, and there's, th there's a lot, by the way, that use guided implants. I don't know if there's any in our area, but I don't want to say that there's not. And, and I'm not saying you can't get a, qual a quality implant, by the way, placed by an oral surgeon or periodontist doing it freehand. I, that's not the point of this. The point of this is saying, making an argument that I think it's a lot easier to deliver quality dentistry with a 3D guide, and there's a ton of benefits to the practitioner and the patient for long-term health and even the process itself. So that's really the arguments I'm making. Um, but as far as the cost, you're typically going to pay just the surgeon for the fixture, which is just the titanium root. So the titanium root at the bottom is all you're paying for, and it's really deceiving. You know, if you call somebody up and you go, hey, I want an implant. What, is, what do you guys charge? And they tell you their fixture costs, that might be $2,000 or $2,500. And you're going, sweet, that's a, that's a deal. The other guy quoted me $4,000. They might have been quoting you everything. So that might have been the implant, abutment, and crown. Um, so those three components are necessary to give you a tooth there. And so that's where you want to be careful to not be deceived on implant costs. So we get a lot of people, it's a very common question, call us up and say, what's the cost of uh, X or what's the cost of an implant? While we want to help everybody, and we do talk about costs, especially at the first visit, it's extremely difficult to give you any sort of definitive answer on that or explain it to the degree that is fair to us. Because if we quote a fee that's higher than somebody else and you don't understand the parts involved, you're going to be like, I don't want to go there. You guys are too expensive. And you just didn't understand that we didn't have time to explain it to you. So that's why we do free, com we do complimentary consultations. Uh, you know, you can definitely... Uh, you know, go to yoursmiledestination.com. We'll do a virtual consult. We'll give you an idea of what the cost is involved with um, your implant after we get some, some figures and facts in front of us. And that way you can make that decision. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it is, a, I would say, a definite benefit. If, if the dentist can place quality implants, it means that there's not going to be any miscommunication or misunderstanding between building your beautiful home and the foundation necessary to support it. And that's what we're doing with this 3D guided process. You know, I'm responsible for building a crown, a nice tooth for you to chew with. And because I know how that works and I understand the surgical aspect, I can do both together uh, in a three-dimensional environment prior to ever seeing you and touching your, your bone and deliver uh, that exact same plan. So that's, that's a huge, huge advantage. That was a good question. I like that. Uh, yeah, so man, that's a that's a whole other topic. Like, what are implants used for? Obviously, today we're talking about implant single tooth replacement. So we're replacing a single tooth with a standard sized implant. By the way, a lot of implants out there, mini implants. I'm going to get some people not happy with me here, but that's okay. Mini implants, they're not intended for single tooth restorations, and the reason is is there's so many disadvantages to a mini implant 
to replace a single tooth. It's too narrow. It doesn't have good long-term prognosis. There's no way to adapt for angulation. So, uh, you know, mini implants are great for a denture prosthetic, and that's what they're designed for. And it takes four to six of those to give a proper amount of retention to hold, hold a denture. So when you're talking about not a single tooth, we're obviously talking about dentures or maybe even like a bridge. You can do two implants and then bridge that. And we've done that uh, multiple times for people. You can also do multiple implants for a bridge prosthetic, or sorry, a, a, a denture prosthetic. And that gets a little more complicated. The ones uh, that are probably the most affordable are called implant retained dentures. So they're dentures that are snapped in. So it's, a, it's an O-ring and a snap. That way the patient doesn't have to have their denture float. And that's typically used for the lower denture because the lower denture is the most common one to want to go up and down throughout uh, chewing and talking. Uh, the uh, upper denture works pretty well with suction to the palate. So that's what implant retained requires a minimum of two implants uh, for the uh, implant retained standard size implants or four to six mini implants. Uh, the implant supported denture is where you're going to have a denture, basically a prosthetic that is screwed into uh, the implants permanently, it doesn't come out, so there's no snaps, and the implants are actually holding up and holding down. It's more like a bridge, um, so it's more like a permanent fixture in the patient's mouth. Because of the precision uh, attachments and the titanium involved, the cost is significantly more than an implant retained denture and, requ and it requires more implants. So a minimum of four for the all-in-four technique. Um, many times I prefer to do six, but all-in-four can be done uh, correctly for patients. So we offer that here as well. Um, it's obviously just, it's pretty cost prohibitive because of the expense to work with precision attachments uh, on an implant supported denture. Good question. What training program did you do after you developed Crystal Mark also? Yeah, so lots of ways to get training. Um, I would say, you know, if you've learned anything, you've probably found other people doing it really well and paid really close attention. Um, and that's probably the way I've learned 95% of anything I do and would continue to learn. So um, there's sericdoctors.com, which is a website that teaches not just Seric dentistry, but there's tons of very bright minded individuals sharing lots of information along with spear education. So those are two, if you're a dentist in the US, I think they do, they have it all over the world, but those two I absolutely love. I think they've got a good online curriculum. They have a place you can travel to and get training there. So that's where I've gotten most of mine is it's Scottsdale Center for Dentistry um, with SericDoctors.com and spear. Uh, those are where, I, where I've gotten it. There's, there's tons of great places to learn it. Um, like I said, honestly, you could, you could watch a ton of footage just like this, but from maybe somebody that has a different slant. My slant, my discussion is about educating the patient. You know, that's kind of the way I'm talking and the way we're, we're dialoguing is how do I help patients understand what we're doing. There's the same educational dialogue and recording and video con content, obviously not typically placed on YouTube because it's gonna be a paid platform. And that's where Seric Doctors and Spear Education, and I'm sure a host of many others where you can go get this training uh, without even leaving your house. I mean, you could learn tons that way. Um, and then obviously at some point you gotta get hands on with it. So, you know, doing, doing procedures and some, at some point you gotta place your first implant. So that's another thing, right? It's the first time for everybody. So I, I still remember my first implant. She's still a great patient today. I always high five her and say hello and say, hey, you were my first implant when she comes in. So uh, I remember uh, her from uh, five years ago. So pretty, pretty cool. And um, it's just a journey, right? Uh, I know a lot more now and learn, learn more every time. I say, I'd say the area where I think I'm probably gaining the most skill and understanding with implants is gonna be cosmetically. So that's the challenge is how do you train tissue and, and, and manipulate the gums and, and everything to look really beautiful when you place an implant in the front. Uh, stay tuned for Eva's, uh, so subscribe to the channel because Eva's a video about her smile. I'm gonna go over that. And uh, it's pretty awesome. You get to see how we took out a tooth and immediately placed an implant. Um, and that's kind of the, probably the most challenging of implant placements. This here, I mean, I kind of, I went easy on this one. I, I, if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna do an implant live, you should go easy, right? You know, don't wanna go into the, dive into the most difficult treatment. So this is a fairly simple procedure to place an implant with that, that type of uh, ridge and position 
um, in the back of the mouth without a ton of cosmetic consequences. Placing an implant right up here in front, trying to make sure the bite's correct, the tissue support, everything looks beautiful, the components work well together. That's a whole different topic and, and I, like I said, I'll, I'll dive into that maybe a little more detail if you guys are into that. Um, you know, watch, watch the, the video with Eva and her implant uh, shortly. Yes, absolutely. So um, a lot of times it's, it's just, it's right to cut your losses. Uh, you know, if the tooth is either not very healthy, so if there's not much left um, and there's not a good long-term prognosis, then I don't see a good reason for you to root canal the tooth. Now, if there's good enough tooth structure above bone, and that can obviously be determined by your dentist, then they should be able to give you some ideas on that. Now, one thing I'd be a little concerned with, so this is a little caveat. If you're going to a dentist that does not place implants, does not restore implants, uh, they're not going to offer you an implant. So it, you, you might want to find a dentist that offers those things. It's not, it's not trying to be mean. It's just, I mean, they're not able to offer you a huge benefit that's been around for a while that really should be available to you should you need a, need a, you know, a tooth that maybe would be best coming out. Um, you know, in our office, we're going to at least present pros and cons and if, if it is kind of a gray area, we let our patient decide with all the information and they get to know that maybe they're gambling a little bit on how long that tooth might last because there's not as much as we would love to see there for the root canal and, and crown to last long term. Um, and we'll give you our opinion on it and then you know, give the option for implants as well. So obviously it, it still comes down in many cases to the patient's decision. There is some times where I'm just like, there's no way we're even gonna try to do a crown because it's just not gonna work. And then we would obviously uh, offer an implant, even if it could need get a root canal, because there's just not enough tooth structure to work with. So hopefully that answers that question fairly clearly. Good. Do you right. think that 3D milling machines are closer to recreating dental anatomy compared to a skilled lab? Yeah, great question. That's probably from Lab Guy. <laughs> so, and I, and I think I know who he is. He's on our channel quite a bit. But uh, no, you know, absolutely not. So you can't just mill out crowns and go, yay, I've, I've got it all done. Um, almost every restoration we have that's going to be visible in the, in the cosmetic zone especially is going to get some final touches placed on it. So if you go back and watch our live treatment, we do all of those things. We do custom little glazing and staining. Uh, we can give the tooth uh, some liveliness that makes it look very authentic and real. Um, and I think that's pretty evident with the number of cosmetic treatment we've done and the reputation we've gained in our community for providing that um, type of care, uh, you know, with, with people. So, um, you know, I, I, I say, yeah, you can, it just takes skill. You gotta, gotta work at it. And that's not to take away from anybody who's a great ceramist. I, I, there's plenty of them out there, I'm sure. Sweet. Oh, we got filming. You guys did great because I think we're down to like 49 seconds. So way to go with questions. So I, I don't know if you can see here, Michael. We can maybe see the pile of snow that's building. So all those uh, shavings there at the bottom are from the carbide burrs going back and forth and throughout this uh, plastic block cutting it out. And it's almost done cutting it. We'll take it and actually remove the um, block from, or the uh, guide from the block. There'll be a little kind of attachments, that way it doesn't fall out. Goes green, we're good. So now it's time to get this block out and you'll be able to see here pretty clearly. Let's see here. Let me see. There's the guide. You can see the access there for the implant. So that's where the implant will go, right there in that little hole. Pretty cool. We're going to go get this cut out and then we'll place our implant. Now I'll let you, Des, go get that off of the block and then I'll go give some anesthetic to Trey. All right. What's up Trey? 
Dexter is going to come comfort you today. All right. Dexter, are, has he been back here hanging with you? He was earlier. Yeah. yeah. Dexter's our therapy dog. He's my dog. He comes to school, our school. He comes to work with me every day. Been taking my little guy to school every day, so that's where I'm getting. Let's see here. All right. Sit you back. Fun game. Since I said I, go, I, I, I did a Freudian slip and said I went to school every day. What, um, what is my age? I think I played this maybe last time. Post in the comments, how old do you think I am? There's probably like three people watching, so it's not going to be. But I know I got the baby face. Come on. Give me a guess. You don't have to, but there wouldn't be a real function or benefit to doing just one um, because obviously they wouldn't be working together to give you support. So um, I couldn't really see a reason other than maybe financially doing it one this year, or one next year, that type of thing. Now, the benefits we have with uh, patient funding is we can usually get funds to help people get them. Go ahead and open real big there for me to place them a little bit more. Uh, frequently and, and pay over time. A little pinch there. Guesses are in the 35 to 38 range. 35, 38. Hey, that's pretty accurate. I'll take it. I am 35. Just turned 35 uh, last month. So, open really big there. Still haven't grown up though. It's a problem. Thank you. Four three uh -huh. uh, by I think it was ten. Yeah. Yeah. I can maybe get that does. We can move the tray a little bit to where you can see better. I think you're going to be good there. I'm just trying to get it where you can get a camera. Can you see pretty well right there? Should be a pretty decent angle, especially if you can. Good. Is that good? All right. Sweet. Don't worry, we're not going to go just yet. Got to get a little bit of time to set up. Are you feeling anything get more numb there?
Didn't feel that? Good. Well, we'll give it just a minute. It doesn't take too long for that to, to set in. So I'll show, before I get into the mouth, maybe I'll show the instruments a little bit, not because I want to get people too much excitement about seeing instruments, but it is kind of a, it helps maybe understand what's happening and why it's so predictable and accurate. Um, so rather than using a, uh, if I show it right here, can you see it? I know it's, I don't want to. So rather than using a blade, right, to cut an incision that is going to have to be reflected off of the bone, this is our blade. It's a just, it's a little tissue window. So this is going to put a little dot on his gums where we can remove just that small portion of tissue. So if you ask me, would you rather have an incision and sutures and all that process, or would you rather have that little hole placed in your gums and the implant goes through it, uh, you can see why it's much more comfortable post-op, less infection, safer for the patient, less pain, and it's quick. So all that's benefit. So we'll use that. Um, let me show how these instruments fit within the guide. So here would be one of the, I'm going to go ahead and slide that out here. I'll bring it back over there so you can see it, Michael. All right. So this instrument, you can see, that's how they work. They slide into this guide, and it's controlled, right? I can't change access, even if I want to, because this guide is going to control that position. It also stops me when I've gone to the proper depth. So there's depth control, and there's angulation control. So both of those allow us to replicate that exact placement in his, in his jaw. Here is another way of viewing that. This is what we're doing right now, so if you can see that. So these windows, you can see, let's go ahead and get the optrogate in there. You've got a big mouth, man. It's good. That's why we chose you, right? Mm -hmm. So we can see how this snaps down. Need just a little cut through there. I'll get that. Give me just a second here. Yep. One second. Be right back. Dad's talk about something. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> you can take that out, Des. All right, I am back. Want to rinse that off for me here? Thank you. So now you can see with those windows, so Michael, if you can zoom in on that, you can see how this allows me to verify that our guide fits his teeth perfectly. 
and I can tell by putting pressure here that it doesn't rock at all. So the guide rocks, but it doesn't rock. Tough crowd, <laughs> tough crowd. So, all right, so now that we've got um, this on there and we know it fits right, we want to go ahead and make our little window in his gums. And so I can mark that very easily with some cavity dye. And in our software over here in our machine, I can tell it which implant we're placing, what size we're at, and it will program all of the components to operate at the right speed and torque and resistance. So that kind of gets rid of all the guesswork out of, or at least manual corrections on your instruments. Doing okay? Uh -huh. Feel anything at all? Uh -huh. Good. So here we're just going to make that little window. There you have it. So that's our that's our big old incision right there. A little hole that we just placed is where our implant's gonna go. A little bit of water here. So hopefully we can see this. Doing okay? Give a little bit of suction right there now, just to verify. Good, perfect. Doing okay. Uh -huh. Great. Nice job. Almost done with that hole. So all I'm doing is making the hole just a little bit bigger for us to place that implant. We're almost done with that. Good job. Oop, lost that there, didn't we? So, I'm going to suction him out there. Doing really good there. We're just going to go ahead and put, place our implant. Probably get this back in so people can see there. So our implant is in this sterile package you'll see right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Is that visible there? Oh, I don't know, Michael. Yeah, I have it. There you go. Is that good? Okay. So there's our implant. We'll attach our implant mount to our implant. Good 
can go ahead and get that offshore gate or the guide back in his mouth there. Okay. Open real big there for me. Good job, sir. So now the motor will slowly place the implant to the proper torque value. So what we had there is we hit a, he's up against some pretty dense bone, so we're going to back it out just a little bit and go back in. Just because you, you're dense, man, that's good, right? Yeah. Yeah. So his bone was just a little dense, so we're going to make the hole just a little bit more better, bigger in diameter. That'll allow us to not have it tighten up so tightly there. Awesome. What a great patient. We got a nice implant. We're done. So we'll get a little bit of suction there. That didn't hurt you at all, did it, Trey? Mm -mm. Yeah. So it didn't, didn't feel any of that. No sedation, no large incision. We've got an implant in proper place. Let me see if I can help people, you just give a little suction there. So maybe we can see off my mirror, Michael, if you wanna, you wanna suction around there a little bit. Just, uh, just get. Thanks. Can you see there, off the mirror? I don't know, can you suction there again, just right at it so that people can see maybe what the implant looks like in place. Got it? Is that good, Michael? Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So there you go. I just wanted people to see the implant. You can see it's purple inside. That's because that's the just the size of connection. It's a color-coded system. So um, the next thing is now that we've got the implant in place, if we look at this this image here, we have tissue and bone on either side of this implant. 
that we want to make certain don't cause an issue with our uh, placement of our future crown and with our healing cap. So uh, you don't have that. There it is. So we place. You got it. Place a little profiler in there, and it allows us to shape the tissue a little bit to where we get a more uh, nicely contoured future crown for him. So it'll just help us deliver um, a crown that has less. I don't know if anybody's had implants. They can probably attest to it. If they're not done really, really precisely, they can be a big time food and plaque trap. Um, so this is a way for us to help avoid that issue, we can get rid of those spots where teeth are gonna have an issue with trapping plaque and food debris. Good. Sorry. And then the last little bit here is just putting a little healing cap. Let me show, uh, I don't know if you're probably still zoomed in on the mouth there, Michael. Show viewers what a healing cap looks like. So that right there is, a, is our healing cap. And it is purple, color-coded with that same connection. And it will go right on top of that implant. And we'll tighten that down. There you go, let's go ahead and rinse. So I didn't, I didn't time it, but we obviously were talking. The goal was to be informative, but I wanted, I wanted at least, you know, you can go ahead and give suction. So you can kind of see very minimal bleeding. He'll stop in just a minute or so, but you can see off my mirror here. Can you see, Michael? Yep. There's our implant in place. And uh, I was gonna have Des go ahead and get another 3D so we can verify position just to show kind of where we ended up. So we're getting another one more image here, Trey, and show a before and after of our placement of the implant. What other questions? Do we have anything there, Michael, during the placement of the implant people come up with? Uh, I have done a handful of freehand um, really as a learning process when I had sufficient, more than sufficient bone. Um, but I, I, I mean, once you've done them guided and lot, I mean, by the way, our team is capable of doing almost 90% of that process, obviously planning it in the software, you know, placing that implant where I want it to go in software. But as far as like imaging, and scanning, all of that stuff, are, are, we have an awesome team of auxiliary uh, members that can, that can make that all work out. Like they do it, I mean, they do it all. And uh, I get a guide in the end after I plan the implant. So we're able to do something with very minimal amount of my time. So I'm able to help more people. But what's nice about that is that uh, we're able to always deliver a guided implant. So it's not just sometimes we decide we're gonna place it perfectly, it's like, Every time I want to place an implant perfectly and with guided approach here, we can do that. So hopefully that makes sense. It's, it's kind of becomes a conviction of someone I think, and I think most people who place guided implants, 3D computer guided implants would say that they become so uh, used to the precision and the placement and the accuracy that we get, it's not just placing the implant, but you guys you can go ahead and take the image here. If you can probably step out this side here, Trey. Watch your step there. So you get so used to those factors being uh, great and your, your crowns go super easy and your patients love the, the result, you love the result, that it's hard to step back and go back in time and place them free-handed. Um, I just, the technology is just too, too good. Hopefully it makes sense. I mean, hopefully that proves it. I mean, these procedures can take less than 10 minutes um, I mean, I had to, I even had to back the implant out and put it back in because of dense, real dense bone, which can happen, especially because we were up there against his uh, dense uh, bone towards his, his tongue. Uh, but, uh, you know, 
we still did it in 12 to 15 minutes. So placement's pretty, pretty quick. Any other questions? Okay. Good questions today. I don't know who they're all, they're probably all coming from the same person, but they seem to have some good questions. So surgery complete. Um, so there are some implant systems that don't screw, don't, don't, uh, t uh, they're not self-tapping. Um, the problem with an implant that doesn't self-tap is, it, remember earlier when I was asked about how quickly can you put a, a repl do an implant in the front, if I want to put an implant in, just like, once again, I'll reference Eva, who is a immediate implant number, no, uh, number eight, is, and I'll show that video here in the next few weeks, but that it would be impossible or very difficult with an implant that didn't self-tap or a non-threaded uh, implant, so one that didn't engage and, and get tighter as you go in. Um, so it's nice to have those because you can get immediate, what we call immediate stability. If you do not have those threads, you can place an implant without those type of threads or just fins. Uh, Bicon is one, great implant system. Uh, don't love the restorability as, as far as like what I've got here. So there's reasons why I'm not in love with it, um, especially since I'm a Cerec user and do get 3D guided implants. You can do guided implants with Bicon, just restorative aspect I love uh, with this implant system. So, um, but I, I do prefer the, the w implants that will engage in bone and get tight and uh, stay, stay put, don't move at all. So the one we just did, just to give you an idea, I think tor torqued in or went to a maximum torque value of about 60 newton centimeters. So it's pretty high. You don't have to get that high, but that bone was rock solid. So. I yeah. Love the milk. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What else? That's it. Um, definitely want to uh, showcase. This is kind of the last thing here. We'll capture is the 3D how where the implant exactly is in space. Um, prove that, you know, I hope, hope it went, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll get that showing to you here in a minute. Um, so it, this isn't the only time you have, you have a question come up and you're thinking through implants or you just, you're maybe dreading have one. We'd love to see a travel to Innovative Dental of Springfield for uh, an implant. You can go to yoursmiledestination.com and fill out some information there. Give us a call. Uh, we'll definitely help you. Uh, we have a system to help get you here and take great care of you and send you home with a smile and, and a tooth uh, with an implant. Um, or maybe more, maybe you're looking for a smile transformation. Uh, that's, that's some things we do too. Those are single visits. So if you watch some of the other previous live events where we transformed a smile uh, with Allie in a single visit with 10 veneers. And then um, we did Tom with uh, full mouth rehab. By the way, we will have a follow-up video of Tom. It's, it's awesome uh, to see him smiling out completely done, upper and lower arch completed. Um, and two visits with full mouth restoration. So uh, pretty cool, amazing technology that we can showcase here on this channel. So that's really what we're about at Innovative Dental is, is really trying to make sure, certain that we are always uh, learning, always searching for the latest technology, the latest treatment that gives uh, more predictable results, uh, safer results, easier for our patients, easier for us to replicate consistently. Um, those are all the type of things you would you know, probably want from somebody working on something as important as your smile. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to do that and invest uh, our hard-earned time, our hard-earned money, and lots of time into learning and, and giving those to our patients. And obviously, this channel is uh, free for those. I hope, hopefully, there's tons of people that are educating themselves uh, across the country over time with this implant video. Now they know and they're armed which, which air places to go to and maybe in their area that might do 3D guided implants. What you need to be asking, so maybe that's a little like, you know, calling up an office. What you need to ask is, if you're wanting pricing, I don't think that's the first thing you should be asking because there's a lot more components to the implant process. I think it's a, that's a very important one. All things being equal, you want to get the best price, uh, but all things aren't equal. So you need to con be concerned about first settling that. So I would make sure you ask, uh, do you do computer guided implants with a 3D x-ray machine? Um, that should help narrow that down pretty quickly on who's utilizing that. They should really have that on their website. Um, I think that if they don't, they're probably not too proud of it or they don't not really familiar with it. And so I, that might weed it out pretty quick. I know it's prominent on our website where we, we talk about 3D guided implants. So there wouldn't be 
you know, any way that we wouldn't be putting that out there so people would know that we're offering the latest and greatest. All right. Well, there we have it, guys. You can see the implant in place. Let's go ahead and look at it. Um, you can really see it just in that view. Uh, let's see, there's a better view, I think. No, that's fine. So there it is, full screen. You can see it's nicely in the correct depth. And if we had a crown right there, we'd be dead on, right? So got a wonderfully placed implant for us to put a crown on here in about four to six months. Typically like six months in that area because of the bone, make sure it's fully healthy. And then the fact is, is that that tooth, I'm sure Trey's gonna wanna eat some good food with that, chomp on some pretty solid stuff, choose through some good steak, beef jerky, all that type of stuff. So we want that implant crown to be solid. Can you do more than one implant in one appointment? So as far as how many implants can be placed in one visit, obviously there's a tolerance for the patient. We don't wanna over um, stress the patient and obviously with this method it's less stress so I placed up to six to eight implants in a visit uh, it just depends like I said on the patient and one thing that's amazing is like right now I guarantee not bleeding at all so the the gums they 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 kind of cover up and stop bleeding pretty quickly no as you saw no sutures were necessary so we didn't have to do any of that his chance of post-op infection is really low. He's gonna take an antibiotic for seven to 10 days here, and um, we'll see him in 10 days and just, just kind of make a, make a verification. I'm pretty sure Des would probably give me a heads up if, uh, if he's complaining of that, so. Yeah, and he'll probably get a, get a phone call from me tomorrow and checking up on him, make sure he's, he's all right. So, just like his mom. So. If an office does Sarah Crown, does that mean they can do Good question. So if an office does Sarah crowns, it does not mean that they can do 3D x-rays. Um, Sarah crowns are uh, a component of this machine right here. So you have to have, this is called an acquisition center. And so this machine is designed to uh, go ahead and, and image teeth. It does not do the 3D x-ray. So you have to have, there's a couple of different machines out there that do that. Um, and they have to be a cone beam. So cone beam 3D. Uh, it has, 3D has to be in the label, and it needs to be made by Serona, by the way. So it's, uh, it's kind of like Apple. You know, Apple's kind of got the closed system and everything within their system. They control and makes, work, make it work really well. Serona is similar in that regard when it comes to dentistry. There are components, the way that they work within it, one system. While a lot of people don't like the fact they control it, um, me as a user love the fact that it's a very simple process to deliver a very predictable, easy results, quick results for our patients. And, uh, you know, it's, that's hard to beat. I mean, I mean, we started this whole conversation less than an hour and a half ago, an hour and 45 minutes, and we have a patient done with an implant, you know, ready to go home with, with no real issues. I mean, just able to go home and live life. Um, and that's really, I mean, that's, that's a huge benefit. If I'm, if I'm someone stressing about an implant, uh, which who wouldn't stress about somebody putting a screw in your, in your bone, uh, this really helps lower that level. I'm not saying you're not going to still have anxiety. I mean, who, who wouldn't still have a little anxiety, but I'm sure Trey was maybe a little anxious, but um, as you heard, didn't hurt him. He's fine, feeling great. It's, it's, a, it's a very, uh, yeah. I mean, you, you hardly felt the anesthetic, right? I mean, yeah, I didn't, you didn't I even know what I was doing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So your advice to anybody probably, I mean, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but you probably would say it's nothing to be afraid of, uh, mm -hmm. very simple Absolutely. process. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions that kind of wrap it up? Thanks for all the questions. I don't know who's answering them all, but are asking them all, but you guys had some good questions and makes it easier to carry on a dialogue for an hour and 45 minutes. We'll obviously piece it together and make it kind of like the highlight reel of uh, the discussion. So after the shots were off, yeah. how long does it, is there pain or is there not? No. So the only amount of discomfort, and I hate to use the word pain because man, that, that elicits a lot of different variables, right? Discomfort would be something very mild. You could sit down and enjoy watching your favorite TV show. He's going to go home, probably will hang out with his wife, have a little bite to eat, watch, watch Netflix and chill. And he's not going to be sitting there going, oh my gosh, I'm in pain. I need to take pain meds. That's just not common with implants done this way. Um, 
you know, that you make a big incision and you flap open the tissue and, you know, he's going to have a lot more pain. Uh, he's going to go home here with very minimal. I mean, it's kind of like right now that if you ever bit into something like a Dorito and cut your roof of your mouth, he has that little bit of a cut right there on where I put the implant, but it's also not an open cut. It's got a healing cap adjacent to it. So he's not even able to really put stuff and rub up against that fresh incision. It's already up against a nice healing cap that's nice and smooth. So, um, you know, there's a lot of advantages uh, that I could go on and on about. I think I kind of, kind of have, so. Can you replace an old implant with a new one? So once an implant, we call it implant, we call it osseo integration. So it's a fancy term for saying the implant's solid, the bone's grown into it, that implant's going nowhere. Um, so an osseo integrated implant means it's there. And the only way to take it out is a pretty, pretty brute force or some special trephinating burrs that will cut around it uh, to remove the bone around the implant to get to extract it. There is no need to get an implant that's osseo integrated and healthy out uh, to do a different one. Now, obviously, if it's not healthy and there's issues with bone loss and affecting other teeth, and that's another thing too, like is there exter ex externalities? Is there things that this implant is causing bone issues and tissue issues with other teeth? Um, that's a fun one to say, tissue issue. I don't want to skip over that. But <laughs> if it's causing any tissue issues, then you definitely uh, want to make certain that uh, you go to a dentist, have them address that if you should take it out. Yeah? Do you use the same magnification of loop? For this that you do for yeah, I mean, uh, the same. Yeah. Um, yeah, 2.5. So 2.5. 2.5 is a really, so I, that's probably a dental student. I, I get a lot of those questions like, what's the size magnification? 2.5 is great because I can see the, the, I can see the, what is the saying? Force through the trees. I don't have to miss anything. Uh, I'm, I also get plenty of closeness, uh, to, you know, plenty of magnification. The biggest thing is a light. So th this, this is the biggest thing, being able to have a light. And this is a cool wireless light. It's made by Oroscoptic. Uh, it's called the Spark Light. Um, but wireless, our whole team has them. So um, big, big fan of light, proper lighting. How long does he have to wait to eat? Go eat right now, man. Yeah. Just want to stay away from things like probably popcorn, uh, almonds, nuts, things that have little shells and husks that can get around the uh the actual healing cap because i can irritate the gums last question yeah no i don't, I don't love what it. if what if your bone is too thin for it to fit an implant so if the bone is too thin we can actually make it thicker so we can graft and that's a very common procedure that we can do uh, to add width to the ridge good question it's the same dude. He's got a lot of questions. Yeah, these are all oh, nice. Questions. Good. I was like, same person. <laughs> After you've had the tooth removed, yeah. what's the time frame to have an implant done? Right. So once again, it depends on the condition, right? So if it's a bad, bad site that's got infection, you're going to want to wait a little bit longer. Uh, but I would, I would play that. A dentist that's doing implants regularly should be able to tell you based off of your current condition. But infection... Well, at least a few weeks. I mean, put you on an antibiotic, get the tooth out, let that body do its thing, get rid of the infection in that site, and then place the implant in a site that doesn't have any sort of risk of infection. The other thing would be with a 3D x-ray, right, is that when you extracted the tooth, what does that socket look like? Um, is there enough bone to really work with, or do we need to let it heal in further? Um, so typically, most implants I place on an extracted tooth, even if it's got an infection, it's been a few weeks, two, three, four weeks. And it's, the term there is called the delayed immediate. Um, it just means we're not placing it exactly after the extraction, and we're not placing it six months down the road after everything healed either. We're, we're kind of delaying and doing an immediate placement after a few weeks. Cool. Uh, if the, any of this is interesting to you and you're going, hey, man, I would like to talk more and look into traveling. I, I think the way you do implants at Innovative Dental is awesome, and I want that for myself. Uh, that we've created a website, YourSmileDestination.com. Definitely go hit that up, and it'll give you some information on how to get in contact with us, the process to traveling to Innovative Dental, uh, whether it's an implant, uh, alignment with Invisalign, or even uh, a cosmetic treatment with veneers and crowns, and, and all the way up to full mouth rehab. Um, definitely check us out. We'd love to, to help you. Technology makes things so much easier, so much nicer. Uh, and uh, make sure you watch, before you do, watch the videos. They'll help get you
kind of educated on what we do and what's different. Um, and you'll, you'll love every moment of meeting our team. They're phenomenal and, and really have a passion for delivering uh, ex exemplary dentistry. So pretty, pretty fun to, to work here. Um, I think there was, go ahead and like the, the video. I gotta, gotta get that out there. Thumb, thumbs it up, please. That'd be helpful so more people can see it. It really makes a big difference in the algorithm, so that way this gets placed and people can learn about it. You definitely would not want to get an implant without watching this video, and I really feel pretty passionate about that. We'll probably put that somewhere in the title, so that way people looking to get an implant at least don't miss the opportunity to learn a bunch about the process and the latest technology to place those. Um, pretty sweet. I think that kind of wraps it up. No new questions. Thanks, Trey. Thank you, Des. Thank you. Um, you know, you guys have an awesome weekend. And uh, you know what? Keep smiling. It looks great on you.